Hi, it's Dr. Steve from Misericordia University. In today's online class, let's take a quick review of all the topics that we covered in the classroom management course. Now realize I'm going to just be highlighting and overviewing here, so I'm going to move rather quickly with the hope that this session will give you a chance to kind of pull everything together and see how everything fits within context. To go back and view any of the particulars, uh, remember to go on Blackboard and you can view all of the particular modules and all of the many PowerPoint and other resources that I've provided there. Way back at the beginning of the semester, in our first class or two, we talked about the three goals of classroom management, and they are number one, to keep students safe. Number two, to keep students on task so they can do their job in the classroom. And number three, to manage students in such ways that will allow them to be able to learn to manage themselves. As we moved into module one, um, it was a, an introduction to classroom management. We started by looking at why do students go off task and we looked at some historical background, and then we looked at classroom management itself. Why is it so important, including a, a view of discipline versus punishment and elements of a classroom management system with the thought that throughout the semester we would visit all of those different elements to help you develop your management system. As we consider discipline versus punishment, we said discipline is definitely the way to go because punishment is trying to stop a child from, from doing something right then and there and use some kind of unpleasant or painful manner to do that. Discipline, on the other hand, helps children learn to control their own behavior so that they act according to what's right and wrong and not because of the fear of punishment. We said that discipline works because we help the child to learn self-control. They can manage themselves ultimately. It's very appropriate for use with adolescents, and it builds self-esteem and shows modeling of good and effective ways to solve problems, as opposed to punishment, which does not work well with adolescents. Uh, it teaches children to deceive adults because they're going to lie about things to avoid punishment, and it tears down self-esteem, and it models for them that violence is an acceptable way to solve problems. Throughout our course, we looked at the importance of communication and the importance of developing rapport and relationship with your students. And we started this whole conversation uh, with this bit of uh, research from Pariser suggesting that teachers need to shift our perspective instead of looking at managing and disciplining, let's focus more on working collaboratively, communicating, and helping students listen. In module two, we looked, out, looked at some foundational aspects of management. We looked at characteristics of adolescent students, and we said that if we consider these characteristics and what our students are like, at these ages, then that will help teachers in addressing their needs and give them a lot of support in classroom management. And the intention was that we would then refer back to that throughout the rest of the semester as we looked at different techniques. In module three, we reviewed legal rights and responsibilities of teachers when managing a class. And for many of us, many of these items were review, but they're important to review and keep in mind. And then we delved further into items such as how to de-escalate situations in the classroom. Um, we also introduced that there were different apps, different technological tools for recording behavior, and later in the semester, we examined those. Module four was a very long module, and we divided it into several sections. Mod 4A dealt with advanced preparation before the school year starts. And we dealt with 
issues such as how to organize the classroom, things like seating arrangements and pros and cons of the different seating arrangements that are possible. Um, and we try to lead you into your thoughts and your priorities uh, in these different areas. We spent some time looking at rules and procedures. We looked at how to prepare them, talked about setting consequences and the importance of communication. And then we looked at preparing for the very first days, that first week of school. As we did this, we looked at some of the work of the Wongs who strongly suggest that the number one problem in classroom management is not discipline, it's the lack of procedures and routines and communicating those items to students. So we spent some time looking at that because the Wongs and other researchers suggest that this is one of the main areas that a teacher has under his or her control that can really contribute positively to classroom management. In this mod, we, we looked at the biggest mistake, according to Linson, that a teacher can make on his or her first day of school, and that would be failure to already enforce rules and expected behavior because the first day might be considered a more relaxed day. So set the tone right from the beginning. And that led us into the uh, historical uh, issue, should you smile before Christmas? And uh, as we looked at that, we said, while some people think that in today's world, teachers have to kind of talk tough or come out strong, um, don't use fear and intimidation. Um, certainly you want to tighten up um, your reins a little bit, so to speak, right in the beginning as you set behavior standards, but uh, certainly smile right from the beginning of the school year. We also considered some research that suggests that teachers should create a, a purposeful seating chart. So not just going alphabetically, but rather thinking through why different students are sitting in different areas. Because building rapport and relationship with students is so important to effective teaching, as well as to effective classroom management, we spent some time looking at how you could practically build rapport with students, including shaking hands or fist bumps with students as they come into your classroom. In Mod 4B, we turned our focus toward motivating students because students who are motivated intrinsically versus extrinsically will tend to be better focused and better on task uh, and, and will tend to get better grades in your class. The heart of the discussion was intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic, and we had a lot to say about both of them. But in essence, intrinsic motivation refers to a student doing an activity for no apparent reward. It's, it's rewarding already to the student, and extrinsic is the opposite. It's doing an activity hoping to get some type of reward or payment in some way. Ideally, we'd like to move our students toward the intrinsic motivation. We said that in the beginning of the school year, uh, most students, if not all, try to put their best foot forward. So in Mod 4C, we talked about maintaining appropriate student behavior. And when you detect inappropriate behavior, manage that, deal with it promptly. And we looked at different levels of how you can deal with, with these behaviors. Start off small, make eye contact, use signals, and then monitor to make sure the student complies. Remind the student, redirect the student, ask or tell the student to stop the behavior. Use your eyes use your teacher presence. If you cannot confront the student or choose not to at the time, flag that behavior and speak to the student later privately. By flag the behavior, we were referring to make it known to that student and the entire class 
that while you're not going to deal directly with the behavior at that moment, that behavior has not gone, gone unnoticed, it's more serious, and you intend to deal with that student and that issue privately. In Mod 4C, we looked at how to create a positive environment in your classroom, a safe environment. And we said that researchers indicate that the teacher holds the power to single-handedly change the atmosphere of a classroom. And we looked at how to communicate your positive expectations as you foster a positive learning environment. In this mod, we considered three models for addressing classroom management issues that arise during instruction. We, we started with uh, some foundational research uh, in performance barriers that basically stated that if a student is going to go off task because they lack something, either skills or knowledge, resources, or, and or motivation. And we looked at um, reasons that students misbehave, that was by Walker, and then we moved into You Can Handle Them All to Bruin and Larson. The work of these two researchers has led to a suite of products, which includes a book, an electronic app, and also a deck of cards. And each of these products allows a teacher to locate management strategies organized by behavior. As you use their model, these researchers prompt a teacher to start by identifying the underlying reason or the primary cause for the behavior. It could be need for attention, power, revenge, or self-confidence. After reading the description to understand it better, the teacher can then locate techniques to, to employ and also uh, techniques not to employ because they would cause more difficulties with this type of student. We also looked at two electronic apps that allow a teacher to track student behavior. The first app we considered was the very popular Class Dojo. This is a very commonly used and very popular app among teachers, but especially among teachers of lower grades. Now, in secondary ed, we can certainly use many of the features of this app at the middle school level but when we're moving into about eighth grade and upwards, a teacher can still use it behind the scenes, so to speak, but a teacher in those grades will not be able to do things like project the display from the app to give feedback to the class, a display that shows avatars and monsters, which are very, very effective for much younger students, but it's still a very powerful app to use. A second app that we looked at was Teacher's Assistant Classroom Management Notes. And this is really ideal uh, for all, all secondary ed. It has a, a, a lot of features and it's a very robust application to help a teacher track behavior and communicate as well. In Mod 4, we turned our attention toward managing more problem and problematic behaviors, more serious issues. And we started by looking at briefly the work of many different researchers, and we kind of summarized it in this form. We said you could, you could uh, classify problems as basically non-issues, non-problems, nothing major, and a minor problem moving up the scale would be considered a major problem, but it's still contained within a few students or at the more serious level, it's a major problem and it's starting to spread throughout the class. After examining each of those levels, we then looked at strategies to manage problem behaviors, such as clowning around, cheating, lying, stealing, use of profanity, and also inappropriate use of electronics. In this module, we also looked at teacher defiance problems. One strategy, we said, was you could draw a line in the sand, so to speak. In other words, set a parameter and say that you will not tolerate behavior that falls below that line. 
Then we looked at strategies of talking to difficult students. We said the bottom line here is don't make a big deal out of those students. Don't, don't give them more attention or more focus than you would other students. After real improvement, then give a positive gesture. But don't, don't make a big deal of all these things because that may make the problem worse. As with all classroom management issues, when, as you manage problem behaviors, start off non-verbally. Don't overreact. Use your teacher presence, then move to verbal, and then have a private conference with the student if needed. If it goes beyond, then you can set up a, a, an agreement or a contract with that student and get that student to commit in writing to improving the behavior. A teacher can always involve the office or contact a parent or guardian. But again, don't overreact. Start small and work up the scale as needed. Remember that you are a teacher and not a police officer. So don't overreact. Focus on teaching. But when you encounter some behavior management issue, can the behavior be handled quietly? Is it more serious? Do you need to flag that behavior and then handle that privately, but let the class know that you're going to be doing that? Does the situation require stopping instruction in order for the situation to be handled? If teaching and learning are not being disrupted, then try to handle it more quietly or flag it and deal with it better later privately. Remember that you as a teacher contribute significantly to good classroom management, and it involves good preparation in advance, good teaching, and good communication with your students. Remember that some classroom management issues occur because as a teacher, your pacing of instruction is just too slow as appropriate for the class's needs. So speed up instruction a little bit because you may be, without realizing it, creating gaps of time where students can go off task. As we were reaching the end of the semester, we concluded by looking at very serious uh, classroom management challenges, and that is dealing with gangs, possible gang members. And we took a look at how you could recognize the, the possibility that gang members are in your class. We talked about the fact that gang members need structure and the need to be belonging and accepted and if a teacher develops rapport and shows them care and interest and follows some specific do's and don'ts, that a teacher could really help these students out and change their lives quite significantly. So having reached the end of the semester, let's talk about our final exam. Our final exam will be a take-home application type exam. I'm going to present you with a series of behavioral scenarios and possibly some additional questions. You'll be asked to apply what you've learned in this course and determine what type of action the teacher might take to address these various behavioral situations. Download the exam file from Blackboard, and when you're completed, upload it back, back to Blackboard. Dates when the exam is available and will be due, will be posted on Blackboard. I really hope you enjoyed this course. I really enjoyed having you in class this semester. And I hope that you found this course to be very practical in its posture uh, as we examine so many very practical strategies that a teacher could employ in the classroom to deal with classroom management issues. You're gonna be great in the classroom. It's been a great semester, and I wish you a lot of success uh, in final exam week.